Hello my love. Welcome back to my channel. It has been quite a minute since I have been on here but there is a very special topic that I want to talk about today that I have been meaning to talk about for quite a while and that is what being an OF girl has taught me. I'm really excited to get into this subject because I've been doing OF for a very long time, <laughs> like four years now, and it's been my main income source for literally those four years. And I've learned a lot throughout the different eras of the platform and also like as a person as I've grown as well. I started out when I was like, <laughs> I think I was like 22, 23, and I'm 27 now. So there's been a lot of learning and growth that has come through and I actually have quite a few pinpoints that I'm going to go over in this video. So thank you for being here. I'm quite excited to get into this video. Let's just jump on in. So the first thing that I actually want to talk about and what being an OF girl has taught me is that who you are now deserves to think about your dreams and goals and aspirations five years from now. For example, saving, having a purpose, and creating a future. So something that I learned recently, and this is kind of something that actually sparked this video, is that there's actually a lot of girls that look up to me and have been watching what I've been doing for several years, and I think that there's a few things that really need to be thought about before any of this. Now I want to, before I continue to dive into this video, just kind of like say, really think yourself through. Like if I could give you any advice on whether or not you should forward yourself on this path, think it through. <laughs> like ensure that every step that you're doing, whether this is in the path of your career or in your dreams or no matter where you're going, like really ensure that this is something that like aspires with your light and who you are and who you want to be in the future. Um, if you don't know who you want to be in the future, Take the time out of your day to really sit down, maybe journal, and do some prompts to just see like who you do want to be in the future. Like if you were to look at yourself or get to have a conversation with yourself five years from today, who would that person be? And would that person be someone that you were proud to become? Some of the best advice that I ever received in my life was back when I used to work a 9 to 5 job, which is so crazy to even think about, but I used to work at a call center and I worked there for like three years, a little bit over three years. There was this one day, this was like actually what led me to quitting my 9 to 5 job, but there was this one day that we were sitting out and just sitting in front, like, the, was he the CEO? It was the CEO or the owner of the company actually came out to like read a bunch of like aspirations and like have a huge conversation with everyone that was working there. And right before he went on stage, this other woman went on stage that was like his best mate or whatever. I can't remember exactly. It didn't really matter. But they got on stage and they were all like answering questions that people had put into this bucket. And the number one question that came out that was like asked often was like what's your best advice and their best advice the person who got this question was look at yourself and who you want to be five years from today and if where you're at today doesn't push you in that direction change change everything about your life change everything that resonates so that you can become that person that you want to be five years from today. When they read that question, my whole perception of everything shifted because I didn't want to be working at a call center five years from that day. I didn't want to be working at a nine to five. That wasn't my dream job. Like, and I didn't actually know really what my dream job was. Like, I only knew like things that I wanted to do in life because I was so young and Something that's come up a lot for me as I've been getting older and like into my later 20s is that I've been realizing that being so young, you don't really think about like your further out goals or your 10 year goals and like maybe you kind of do or you have like an idea because like as you're growing up everyone's like, ooh, what do you want to be when you're older, you know? But they don't really like deep dive into it and give you the opportunity to get to know yourself to know what you want to be. And so that's something that I think is extremely important when it comes to like who you're becoming and how you're choosing to move forward on your journey. And this is actually something that I got taught along this like last five year journey because when I first started, I didn't 
know what I wanted in the future and I never sat down to like look at what I did want to become or who I wanted to become and so the first few years that I was on this platform I wasn't making or I wasn't saving any money and I wasn't thinking about a future me I was just taking everything that was coming my way and using it to live the life that I wanted to live because that's what I thought about when I wanted like five years from today what do I want to be I wanted to be a model I wanted to be traveling like I wanted to be into the tropics that was like all I really knew because that's all I had ever given myself the opportunity to dream up for myself and so that's what I was doing like with all that money that was coming in which was totally on my path and like but Coming from that point to where I am today, I now recognize that five, year, five years from today, me deserves to know that I was thinking about her. And she deserves to know that I have aspirations for her to do well later on in life or continuing through life. And so something that I've learned throughout this journey, this past like five year journey, is really just to put money aside, which is something that I just think is so important. Um, to create a savings account. I actually have several savings accounts now, but for the first like three years on this platform, I didn't. And just like dreaming up and imagining a future is so important. Like even if you don't know exactly what you want to do, starting to write out or doing journaling prompts and taking the time to sit with a like future version of yourself and just like note everything that you might want to see in those realities and just start building the backbone of who you want to become. Because if you add all these little pieces together, that's what you're gonna see in your future. And that's something, or one number one thing that I've learned throughout this journey, is just like putting the time in to think about a future version of me. I feel like it's often not thought about in this way, but like people are like, who do you aspire to? Or like, who are you thinking about? And People will push their energy out into all these other directions, but instead you can take your energy and push it into a future version of you. That's going to benefit you. No matter how you choose to do it, it's going to benefit you because you're thinking about a version of you that deserves the love that you can give. Okay, the second thing that I really want to talk about is kind of like, cat got your tongue, so I'm going to actually read it. The more you care or construct a concept of self others perceive, the less they'll perceive you in any terms you're aspiring for. So let me break it down. Throughout this journey, this is a huge journey of self if you dive into it, and it has a lot to do with social media, and it has a lot to do with how you're going to be perceived, especially in an online reality. The more energy you're putting into a specific sense of how people are going to perceive you, which this is something that I really deeply struggled with, and so this is why this is something that is so important to me, and that I have learned so deeply. When I first started out on this platform, I really cared what people thought, and like, Coming into this journey, you really have to learn to let go of what people think because the whole world has such a bias about this platform and even just being so open and authentic in yourself and in your body and because of that, you like you have to learn to let that go and not care as much. It's kind of like the subtle art of not giving a fuck, you know? That's an amazing book, but that's really what you have to learn to like hone in and have as the essence of you in order to be on this platform and even to be in social media in general, anywhere online. You need to care less. You need to be focused on how you feel about everything that you are doing and how you feel in the moment that you are also creating. In the beginning, I cared so much what people thought that I constricted everything that I did and everything that I created to a specific like era of what was allowed. I wasn't allowed to sh share like my full self-expression because I didn't want to be perceived in certain genres of certain things. And this is actually just because of my own bias. Like, I grew up in Utah, I grew up in a place where it was deeply affected by religion and by perspective and by bias, and so I grew up with my own internal bias that I've had to work through for many years about what self-expression women can have in this world and how they can do that. And so that's my own issue, right? So with that though, I 
thought I had to be so careful with what I created and what I did. And so I kept the bounds so specific. And I even throughout my journey attracted people that would hold me super accountable to those bounds because I thought that that was the only thing that made you good. I thought that that was the only thing that made you appropriate. I thought that that was the only thing that made me able to be received by others in a high light. And throughout the years, I slowly ended up in these different points along my journey that ended up challenging me to a degree that I had to look at my construct of like how I could be in my self-expression and be received and be accepted. And I had to be like, oh, like I am allowed to have self-expression in any way that I want to have self-expression or that I feel in my body and in my heart and in my tapped in intuitive abilities to be in self-expression. And by doing that, I was able to sort of look at my bounds and start to release them a little bit. And this wasn't just one time that this happened. Like this was throughout my entire past like four year journey. And it would just like slowly loosen up a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. And I've gotten to a point where I feel more in my divine expression than I've ever been, but I still have that. Like I still see that within myself. And so by me saying, the less that people are going to perceive of you based on how you choose to make people perceive you, I'm saying that you need to let it go. Like letting go of the bounds of like how you're wanting people to perceive you and instead just moving back into yourself and into your self-expression and your body and how you want to see yourself is going to let loose all the constructs of people perceiving you a certain way and instead they're actually going to start to give more opportunity or just space and freedom for people to then perceive you in all the ways you may have actually wanted them to perceive you. You really have to like not expect anything because people are going to perceive you how they want to or need to perceive you in order for they themselves to be able to grow from that experience. And people need that space. They need that opportunity to be able to grow and to be able to kind of experience a mirror between two beings so that they can see what they do and don't aspire to or align with or what ignites them, etc. So just learning to like let it go a little bit more and like be more in your own body and in your own self is something that I've really learned along this journey and I'm still learning. Literally everything that I say in this video, like I'm still learning all of these things as well, but they're such amazing lessons that I have learned throughout this journey and this really does like go out and explore against the entire depth of the online world. The online world is only going to get more like <laughs> intense or really like develop in ways that we cannot even imagine as we continue to grow and I just feel like it's extremely important that as we continue to grow we are able to see the online world as a place where people get to experience reflections of self and more so pull our energy back into our own bodies so that we can become better people for more of that self-expression and expansion to happen throughout the mass of people and beings in general all across the entire planet and maybe eventually other places too <laughs> number three i actually already kind of like mixed this into number two but the subtle art of not giving a fuck is real you really just need to learn to like not care as much and i feel like this guy actually also has a podcast which i think is pretty good but the book is like definitely 10 out of 10 recommend because learning to like care less is extremely important when it comes to the shift in the conscious level of beings at this time on planet earth because we are developing so much in our technological field we have to be able to really like take the energy and move it through us in a way that's beneficial for our own path as things have progressed in society the world has just gotten very confusing and more disconnected than ever especially through social media and so what we can do as an opportunity is use social media as an opportunity to know ourselves more to share ourselves more and to be able to assist others in doing the same with themselves as we continue and that is what not giving a fuck is able to do <laughs> It just opens a world of opportunities that are so beautiful and so available. Number four, 
A burial of your old self or selves is needed in order to welcome in a new self of abundance. As I've continued to progress, I've gone up in different um, areas of abundance. Like I have really, like when you leave a nine to five job um, and then you start to go into the online world, you kind of experience this a little bit. Like your income doesn't, it doesn't do this. I mean, it does if you look at like a really like zoomed out graph. But what it really looks like is a lot like the stock market, actually, <laughs> which is so funny. But your like income will do this, and then it will do this, and then it will dip, and then it will do this, and then it will dip. And it kind of just like goes up and down until it eventually continues to grow upwards. But that's because you're learning things along the way to continue to welcome in that abundance, and you're learning what does and doesn't work. And that's why it takes such a like period of time for you to learn a lot about abundance. Now, when I say burying your old past selves in order to bring in abundance, you have to be willing to let go of the versions of you that held on to the concepts of financial stability that were holding you in a past experience or a past way of living. For example, when I quit my 9 to 5 job, I actually, before I ever started social media, well, I started social media, but I ended up quitting my 9 to 5 job where I was making decent money, right? Um, that was like right out of high school and then I ended up working as a bartender, or not a bartender, a server at a restaurant, a few restaurants, and my income went from like super high to like really fucking low. And I was also doing all my social media stuff to like build that income as well. And that version of me was so stuck in the concept that I couldn't make money if I wasn't working like a nine to five job. And so I had to kill a version of me that thought I had to be in a nine to five job, like dead, right? And bury that version of me so that I could learn that it would take time and I could make money on social media. And from that point forward, when I was able to let go of that past version of myself, I was able to then shift to the next like moment in time or the next version of self that would welcome in an even higher concept of who I could become and how much money I could make online. And this is a continual process that I have done probably over a hundred times. And I still struggle with it now with like where I'm at in my income, trying to like make it make sense and how I can let go of the past version of me so I can then welcome in the next version of me that is going to let me or allow me to live in a reality where I make even more financial abundance. All right, the fifth thing that I have here is that learning to sit with what rises will save your life and your mental health. This is something that goes so beyond just being on social media. This is something that has actually genuinely saved my life and helped me expand as a person because the only way that you're going to be able to move forward in life and actually make a shift and actually make a change is going to be by sitting with what rises in your body. There's so many different ways that you can do this. I have hypnosis that you can get. Well, I only have one right now. I'm planning to make more at some point. But hypnosis is huge for this. Just learning to like sit and breathe into your body. Breath work is another opportunity. Meditation is another opportunity. Being able to sit with the dark parts of you or the parts of you that you haven't really looked at or that feels so hard to sit with and letting them just come to the surface or breathing into them as they're coming up instead of like being so afraid of these parts of you that like need to be seen and felt so deeply. It literally will change your entire life in a way that pushes you forward in such a positive light. Like this saved me because I used to ignore all the dark sides of me and everything that I'd ever been through or experienced or done that was so scary because I didn't want to look at it and I didn't want to experience it again. But as I continued on my journey, I was able to slowly learn how I can sit with it even little tiny pieces at a time, just like looking at these little moments or facets of my life or experiences in my life that were hard, were like, Ugh, you know, that's like how it felt to even like think about it. But like by letting it rise and breathing into it, I was able to actually start to process a lot of things that I've been through or I've experienced, things that have been really difficult for me throughout time. And 
that stuff has like been able to then come up in my body and release out of my body which has been so beautiful and has changed me as a person into this magnificent person that can now talk to you in this video because this girl did not exist when I was burying all of those things inside of me. Plus, this really like skyrockets your mental health journey because it gives you a way to move in a direction that can then let you do even deeper work of self, which is just such a gift that you can give to yourself over and over and over and over again, and it is so beautiful. All right, number six is that you will never be that version of you that you've been before. You are who you are now, and you can move from the energy that you've cultivated within <laughs> moving forward. You're never going to be like an old version of you again, and things are going to continue to get better and better and better so long as you choose to be okay with whomever you are showing up as today and whomever is coming through in your essence today. There's a car, so I'm going to let it pass. As you change over time and you let your old past selves die, you're going to have to be the person that you are today. And sometimes there are going to be moments where you kind of like miss old versions of you, but you just have to remember that you are who you are today because you've let them go. And there's a better version of you that's going to then emerge from you as you continue to move forward. And things may get harder or they may get more difficult, or they may get more confusing, but by moving through that, you're going to be able to transform yourself. These chickens. <laughs> and I just feel like that's so important. Like we all spend so much time reminiscing on these old versions of ourselves. And especially like for me, like I think about the days when I wasn't who I am today sometimes. I don't actually do this that often anymore, but I used to do it a lot. And I used to think like, oh, like, what if I never did this? Like, X, Y, Z. Okay, number seven kind of ties into this, and it's that you really can have everything you've ever dreamed of. And I wouldn't have believed this if you asked my little nine to five me, because one, I didn't even know, like, what I really desired or wanted, and two, I, like, didn't believe that any dream could happen. I had been very, like, pushed into the ground and buried to my neck down to believe that like I couldn't get somewhere, that I couldn't dig myself out. But you can. And I believe that anybody can. This is something that I really strongly like believe in. I think that you can get through it, but it isn't going to be easy. I mean, for some people, it might not feel hard either. I don't really think there's specific words to describe it. It's not just like black and white, you know what I mean? Like it's a lot more depth than that and, and that's why it's like, it's that's why people use the concept or the idea of like a spiral as you're growing. Like it's gonna feel like a loop and then you come back to something and you're like, oh, I'm going in circles, but you're rising. You're rising as you're going in circles. And that's a lot of like what it is. It's never gonna be like just black and white. It's gonna be like this full, three-dimensional experience because that's what we are. We are in the 3D <laughs> until you hit the 5D. But by letting old versions of yourself go, you're then able to move yourself to a place where you can start to dream up the newer versions of you. For example, the visions that I see of my future now, like I never would have even allowed myself to dream five years ago or when I was at my normal job or my nine to five job, whatever. I wouldn't have even thought that I was like good enough to do that because along my journey I had to do so much self-work also and work really deeply into my self-worth which was actually probably the hardest thing on my entire journey and still is to this day. Let me remind you, it doesn't just end. You are always working on your self-worth. You are always transforming. You are always pushing yourself further. It's actually a really beautiful process and you will learn to love the process or you'll learn to appreciate the process if you don't love it. And it'll be worth the energy that you put into it because you'll get to watch yourself transform into the person that you really always wanted to become. This one's really good. Number eight, people will show you exactly who they are. Jealousy, unfair tendencies, judgment, you will face all of it. And you will be better for it. This one is a huge theme that comes up. Like, as I started my journey into this platform, I really watched people start to perceive me in a different way, and I started to get people perceiving me and projecting onto me, and people still do it today, 
so many things that were actually like their own biases and their own experiences and their own like perceptions of what things were that they could work through in themselves and as I continued on the journey I started to notice it more and more and like really start to understand a bit more of what it was but like that stuff comes up more and more and more as you rise as a being. It's not just like if you're in this journey on this platform, it's like all throughout life or in any way that you choose to rise, you're going to experience this, you're going to witness it, and you're going to watch it happen. You're gonna see people that you never thought would act in a certain way or come on to you in a certain way or project onto you in a certain way and they're gonna do it. They're gonna throw stuff at you and these things, you're gonna be like pretty challenged by them and also given an opportunity